We're going to have a walk through the welding shop. And first, we're going to start at the demonstration area here. So we have lots of welds uh, to look at for a demonstration, all the way from oxyfuel cutting, oxyfuel welding and brazing. We got some MIG welding here with S6. And with over here, lots of S6 with uh, backing on the material for full penetration welds. Over here for some thinner material. So what we're really looking for is just the, the bead conch here, the smoothness. Over here we got some uh, flux core and some stick welding. So we'll be looking at some uh, T-joints, uh, lap joints, outside corners. This is a CWB weld over here to get your certification. And some aluminum welding over here. And some sub-arc right here. So quite a few different processes and quite a few examples to be looking at what a good weld would look like. It's a good area to start to look, just to get an idea of what a good looking weld looks like. Over here the weld booths, we have 40 Lincoln machines and we have 20 Miller machines. The Lincolns are a little more versatile for us because they're able to do all processes to do all processes with these Lincoln machines, we have to have this advanced module down below here that plugs into this power source through these cables that plug in here. So 20 of our Lincoln machines have this advanced module and that advanced module is for uh, TIG welding with AC for aluminum and surface tension transfer for pipe welding. So without that module, we just use the negative and the positive up here to plug in right here. But if you do have this advanced module, we do plug in down here. So that's the only really difference between having one of these and not. For this one here, it looks like the stick welding electrode is plugged in there. And if you're to be doing any MIG welding with this uh, upper uh, source here, power feed. You will have to use this power cable here. And this one here is a Tweco and as simply as unplugging this here, coiling that up and plugging this one in here. Again, look for the slot that lines up. Oh, that one's over here actually. Sorry about that. Get that in the positive. These Tweekos are a little cumbersome, but they do get in there. A little bit of a squeeze, so. And actually, you would be able to leave both of these plugged in. I was thinking of the other machines there with just the positive up top, so. Maybe I'll leave that one plugged in. That one was just unplugged for some reason. And if you want to go from negative to positive, you just change these here. So the negative and the positive, same with down here, the work lead, negative and the positive. Just reversing those. Okay. This one here is missing the MIG gun, and it'll probably be located inside the weld booth. This one here is also missing the wire, so we'll have to get that from the tool room and feed that through. So a little bit of extra work to set everything up. So welding is easy when everything's set up and all you have to do is press the button. But for welding you do have to do some setup and you do have to know what is negative, what is positive and where all the plugs go. In the booth here we're going to see the weld table. This table here is for fit up a plate only. We do not weld on this table except for tack welding. As soon as everything's tack welded up, we do all our welding on the arm. Um, just because, as you can see this table here, got a lot of weld spatter, tacks, 
and it makes it very hard to fit up your material on a table like this. So these tables should be ground up every day so they're nice and clean and shiny for yourself and the next person so they're nice and flat and easy to tack your pieces together and also utilizing this here for tacking your pieces together in a, uh, in a 90 degree fit up. Over here we can tack our uh, welding pieces on and then again at the end of the day we can easily unscrew this here and take this out and go to the grinding room and grind this up. So everything here is adjustable. We do have a bolt in the back here. This is adjustable up and down on this welding post here. And these tables are adjustable as well. There's usually a bolt here and this table just lifts up out of there. Little rod holders here for a couple extra rods that you're using. We see a ground jumper in the back here just for extra ground to your project. These tables are grounded up top here. So we don't have to worry about the ground. They are grounded. That goes back to the machine. So these are grounded. It's just we use a ground jumper sometimes when we have a project that uh, requires a little bit more grounding because of arc blow or other welding problems that we have. Over here we have some ventilation. You're going to want to make sure your ventilation is turned on. So this little lever here just shuts a, a baffle on the inside, open or close. This moves around up and down, back and forth. And you want to make sure that is right over the welding arm or your welding. Uh, these will turn on as soon as you turn, uh, strike the arc. So. Uh, machine has to be turned on and as soon as you start to weld these will turn on after 30 seconds they turn back off so they do not run continuous over here we can see the MIG gun so just a place here to wrap things up so we just have a hanger here <clears throat> and over here we just have a place to mount our hang up our grinder that's what that's for so again, just try to uh, coil all this up neatly, obviously, so it's easy to take on and off. And you can see the stinger here has been placed on here. And the MIG gun is, is on here as well. So it looks like it's missing some parts and pieces. So we'll have to get those from the tool room. Over here, you can see all the gases. There's quite an array of gases that we have here from full argon, uh, generally for the TIG welding. Uh, the CO2 for the uh, short circuit transfer uh, of S6 plus some uh, flux core for T9. Over here we see a argon CO2 mix, a 7525 and a 928. Uh, the 928 just allows us to go into the pulse and the spray transfer modes. The 7525 is good for the flux core T9. Uh, just for a little smoother weld bead. These ones here you just want to make sure these valves are turned off when they're not in use and when you're about to use one obviously we'll be turning one of those on and then the uh, gas source here very easily these are just a quick connect here and you just press these back on. Simple as that. Uh, you're gonna have to uh, squeeze the MIG gun to allow the gas to come out or the purge button and then just dial these uh, side knobs in here to adjust the flow rate of your flow meter so all the way in shuts it off and all the way out uh, opens that up. So there's our gases there again just making sure those are shut off. Our well booths here we do have uh, uh, bins in here scrap buckets for rods or materials so we empty those out at the end of the day. Every booth should have a dust pan here and a broom. So we see one next door but we don't see one in this booth here. So at the end of the day the floor should all be wiped up. All the material should be taken out. So this material should not be in here. Everything should be removed and cleaned uh, for yourself and for the, uh, the person the next day. Okay. Uh, there is a light up here as well and a light switch on the wall. Hey, a little brighter. 
Maybe I should have turned that on first as we walked in here. So just a little extra light there. And we have a power plug on the wall here for when we do run a grinder in here. We do not like to grind in here because it creates a lot of extra dust. And if the dust is not picked up with the ventilation and then the welding machines get covered in dust. And most uh, weld booths do have a stool in them. Um, just if uh, you want to get a little bit more comfortable with a little bit of welding, you'll have to do some adjustments on the arms for that. So there's one of our Lincoln booths here. We'll go down and we'll just have a walk through the welding shop. Here's our test room over here for our weld testing. And we do our weld test in here with our bend coupons. This machine here does some bending. Same with this machine over here. And we have a, a setup over here for our stamping our oven here with all our rods in it. There'll be another one of these in the tool room uh, for our 7018 that requires a, uh, an oven to keep the rods warm, humidity low. Uh, this station here is just for the uh, inspectors only for cutting up their coupons for in the uh, inspection room. So down here we can see a big alley of welding machines. Uh, we do have quite a few different rows here. So this is another row. We get about 10 machines in each row. These ones all have the advanced module in this row here. Down over on this side here we do have some that are dedicated for aluminum. And we do have some that are dedicated for uh, T11 flux core as well. So we see some machines so we don't have to change out the wire and the MIG guns and So it makes it a little bit quicker that way. We can see the Millers over here. Like I said, we got a boat. We do have 20 of these And then we have the Lincoln's over here and these ones here do not have the advanced module on this side But the ones over here on this side do So for these ones over here, let's have a quick look. This one's got the uh, MIG gun on here. So making sure these are plugged in here. And they'll only go in the one plug. They won't fit into the other one. And then you can see the cable here from the MIG gun up top uh, being plugged in right here. So very simply. And then uh, from there, we just unplug this and plug in the stinger right there. So very simple. If you want to go from negative to positive, it's just as simple as unplugging the positive and putting it into the negative, and then the negative into the positive. So if you're doing uh, thin sheet metal with uh, uh, the stick welding, uh, it generally runs a little bit better on the negative because of less penetration. So some welding wires with the MIG run uh, you're able to reverse the negative and the positive and some wires like this one here the S6 only runs on the positive so you cannot reverse that for less penetration okay. uh, we do have some cooling stations if your material does get too hot so this is a little dunk tank there you can dunk your material in and then just to finish up uh, over here, we just have more rows here of, of Lincolns. And then just the final row of Millers here down the back. The Millers here are just a little bit more of a simple machine. Uh, the one with these Millers here is we can't do the uh, TIG welding with the AC on here for the aluminum. And it doesn't have the uh, pipe welding capabilities of the wire for this one either so very simple machine very easy negative positive uh, you do have the remote switch there again just your wire feeder up top uh, same sort of thing just a little bit different and these are our, our millers down here so still a great machine 
Some people prefer the, prefer the Millers and some people prefer the Lincolns. Uh, it's just that uh, for us, the, Link, the Lincolns are uh, just able to uh, do more welding processes. Okay, that is our uh, welding area there for our MIG and, and TIG and stick welding.